Hi again, we're back. Uh, fortunately, we have the same speaker that we had when we started uh, this session uh, a while back. Uh, first, I'd like to reintroduce our panel for those of you that uh, may not see segment one. Uh, on my right is John Bowen, and I'm Ray Marr, and this is our speaker today, Eleanor Cress, who's going to be responding to some questions we have, and then Ellie Tyson and Jim Jones. So we're back again. Um, you may notice that we haven't changed our outfits too much here. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, I want to just start with a, a, a question that we answered just at the end of the first program, but I, I think it's important uh, that the people of Long Meadow realize uh, that uh, what, what kind of a place Emerson Manor is. Uh, Emerson Manor, uh, Ellen, maybe help me out on the number. The amount of taxes that this Emerson oh. Manor pays has paid. Uh, One point five million three hundred five hundred thirty-one thousand over a million yeah. and a half. That's great. Since nineteen eighty-one. So they're good taxpayers. Yes, we That's are. Very good. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see, John. Uh, would you? Uh, you had a question that you were asking me earlier. So maybe you could. Ask Eleanor now. Yes, I had a um, <coughs> follow-up question mm -hmm. on an earlier question um, in regard to eligibility. Uh, my wife and I have friends who have two pensions, um, and should she die, he cannot collect on her pension. Should he pass away? Should she pass away? Yeah, he cannot collect on hers, and she cannot collect on his if he passes away. At what point should they apply on the waiting list? Because obviously with the two pensions, they would be market rate, right. uh, and with one, they're very apt to be subsidized. So should they apply early, or what would you recommend? I, I would certainly recommend that if your housing situation is such that you feel you would like to be at Emerson Manor, that you get on the waiting list now. Uh, we don't know how long um, it's going to take for the um, markets, uh, the uh, new apartments, the new, new market rate apartments to turn over. Uh, ten people, or ten uh, couples, have just moved in. So you might as well get on that waiting list. If one spouse or the other um, dies, then um, the, uh, the, the office will take a look at the, uh, the income that is left to the surviving spouse. And if that person is eligible and wants to move into a one bedroom, then they certainly, uh, we can accommodate them. Thank you. Is that no. Thank you. That makes sense. Your question. If, if they're in, sense. A, if they were in a, a two-bedroom right. uh, facility and one spouse dies, can they stay in that two-bedroom facility? I believe if they're subsidized and they're in a two-bedroom and they're practically, I think there's only one or two left now, uh, if they're subsidized in a two-bedroom, no. They would have to then go, go to into a one-bedroom one if see. there's one spouse okay. surviving. Okay. Can I ask too, Eleanor, um, if you're on this list right, and your name comes up and yet it's not time for you to move as yet or you don't feel that you want to move, how many do you re-put your name on or how long can your name stay on a list? I believe they call you two more times and then put you at the bottom of the list. So it, it just depends so on what the vacancy. Yes, right you can you stay. Uh, you can refuse once. You can refuse the second time, and then uh, maybe the third time you go to the bottom of the list. Okay. So. And, and what is the rate of turnover? Well, I I can't estimate that. Um, uh, last year, the last tenant of the original 1981 tenants wow. just passed away. A woman at 96 years of age. Now uh, we have no original tenants. Oh, I see. Um, I don't know the average age, but we have many 80 and 90 year olds. And I, I have another <laughs> um, question yeah. um, that um, just came up. 
in regard to um, eligibility. Mm -hmm. um, oh, gee, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll ask I guess I must be eligible. <laughs> <laughs> if, if a person has a two-bedroom uh, at a, pa a house and they want to say their, their grandchild comes up here and wants to go to college, Springfield College, can that person move, can that child move in with no. the grandparents? No, uh, you have to be 62 years No matter age. what? No matter what. But they can stay for a short period of I time? I think they can visit a certain number of days a year. I see. My, my children come and stay at, uh, you know, visit me, but um, there's, a, there's a limit to how long a younger person can be in the apartment. Now you mentioned on the, the new property that's being built, uh, Proposed. proposed being built. Right. You said there was a common dining room? There will be a commercial kitchen and a large enough dining room that we may be able to uh, plan a meal a day program. But we have not, we don't get funding from the federal right. government for that. So that so would be included, or would that be tacked on to there? That would be an extra. an extra. If we offer a meal program, it would be an extra. I but see. obviously, it couldn't be $20 a meal for right. people. We right. would have to figure out how to do a modestly priced meal. Okay. And so at this time, there aren't any dining areas no. or anything like that? Some tenants get meals on wheels, as right. Ray mentioned. Right. But uh, there is no um, meal program. So every facility has a working kitchen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. My question has come back. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you ever have an open house so that we could see some units oh, and we see did the rest when we of the facility? We had the market rate apartments open, and uh -huh. we did in, in, uh, get in touch with everybody who had either called or written uh -huh. and in, indicated they were interested. They were told they could come and see okay. the new apartments. Okay. And um, we've had, well, uh, we've had a few open houses, but mm -hmm. not a lot. I mean, people who, who want to come to live, obviously they can see an apartment if they're interested in making an application. Okay. Okay. Stephanie will show them what an apartment looks like. So prior to getting on the waiting list, list you can they see can an see, apartment. Uh, yes. what they're dealing with. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, I have uh, one question. Okay. I think you've answered most of it. Uh, what does a resident get for his or her money? In other words, you includes for utilities, how about a parking space, garden, so on, yard upkeep, and uh, are pets allowed? Yes. When we started, HUD um, didn't allow pets. <laughs> and at some point, the national thinking was that uh, seniors did uh, enjoy and it was re rewarding for them to have a pet. So um, a certain size limitation, but you can have a cat or a dog. Okay. Now the new facilities you said may have elevators, is that because? We do of now. The 10 market rate apartments that we built were added on to each of the four buildings and an elevator was part of that new is construction. Is that because of the uh, Bill the Americans with Disabilities Act? Part of it is that, and part of it is that HUD has said, okay, you know, if you can get the funds uh, together, uh, you know, in part of your construction, you can have elevators, now which they didn't used to allow. If you bought a condo, you'd have a monthly maintenance fee. These people don't have to pay a maintenance fee. It's just fee. Your, your rent. Your rent pays for all the other right, niceties. All, right. And I think you answered this question, uh, can they have an assisted living professional brought in that's a, uh, due to their medical expenses, right. medical policy? Right, and it's policy. part of their, f their own funds that pay for it, either their insurance or their direct funds. Now, can that person, go back to the two bedroom, can that person be installed in that second bedroom? If she need, if that person I needs think, a uh, round the clock. The question was answered by uh, Stephanie mm. that in certain cases, if it's someone uh, who needs that medical attention in the evening, yes, that could be allowed. Okay. Um, uh, but I, I don't want to be held to that. I'm sure the lawyers wouldn't have to look at it. Now, when they, when these people, when we move into these apartments, us. Um, the people can decorate the way they want. Are there certain restrictions? There are limitations to the color of painting on the walls and, um, and things that you can put on your balcony or right. your patio. Right. Every apartment has, a first floor has a patio, 
second floor has a balcony, and that will be true in the new the new building also. Okay. Everybody will have a patio or a balcony. I see. One, one other thing, by the way, that again, <clears throat> doing my little Meals on Wheels trip, um, I'm aware of it. You have a security system there too, in the yes. sense that uh, you can't get in there, and you they have a directory, and you can beep somebody and tell them who you are, and if they recognize you, they have a release from their room. Right. Which, it's on uh, the telephone, actually. Yeah. They okay. Release the front door. Okay. I don't see what they do from there. And yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. That's good. All right. And I want to just make sure. The cable TV and telephone are, are the person's responsibility. Expense. Extras, right. right. Okay, but all the other that Heat I think we... Heat and light. Yeah. Electricity. Um, and they get a park, one parking space uh, per unit? Yeah, I, th I think actually there might be some of the couples that have two cars, but we have adequate parking. Okay. It's not, yeah. you know, there's not a lot of extra parking. But when we build a new building, we're going to have another extended parking lot. So at that point, I think our parking will be And going adequate. back to a question that Ray asked a long time ago about the uh, gym facilities or workout. Or right. The, do you have a program, or is it just there for them to? We have uh, someone, I believe, from the Y that comes I once see. a week and leads exercises. Leads the but the room is available, um, I, I think. On a uh, daily basis yes, for them. Yes, okay. for exercise. And I mentioned the greenhouse and the right. garden, and the oh, we have right. several gardeners who are, uh, you know, really produce some wonderful. <laughs> I was afraid they were going to, uh, <laughs> when you start re-adding on, if if that becomes a reality, that uh, the garden no, might go. But it's really not that close to. No, no, where, it's okay. not in an area where we can build. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, Eleanor. Yeah. Oh, this is Ellie's question. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Right? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, my question is: Would you share with us what you see as the greatest benefits of living at Emerson Manor? Well, for myself, I can say that uh, you know when I first got involved with senior housing, I had a husband, <laughs> I had three children, young children, and um, I had parents who were living in their own home in Hoyoke, and I thought it would be wonderful if either one of those, you know, my parents died, that the other could come and live in senior housing in Longmeadow. Well, that never happened. Then I became a widow, and at some point, I um, sold my home and moved to Emerson. And I have one of the two-bedroom market apartments, and I've con I had continued to work after I moved in. And I'm very happy. I'm retired now. I have um, plenty to keep me busy, and I, I enjoy living there. Um, there's, I don't have any personal responsibilities, you know, to shovel the sidewalk or fix the roof, <laughs> clean the gutters. All the good things. <laughs> so, um, and there are lots of activities. We have um, uh, people organize trips uh, in groups and we have many parties and bridge and bingo and things that people do in the community room. Do you, do you have one of those Vans from in the we don't have a van of our own, but the um, the town uh, and PVTA uh, have programs where okay. seniors can book to go to the doctor or right. or take trips. Now, on your eligibility requirements, once you're <clears throat> you're in Emerson, Emerson Manor, can the people uh, earn? extra money like part-time if they does that affect their eligibility requirements? Well it's just that they have to stay within the limits that's have, all. Okay. But we do have a few people or you know we're still working at 62 years of age many sure. people are still mm -hmm. working. Especially right. now. They have to work. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think I asked you this question when we were discussing right. questions right. way back. Uh, there's no nurse per se, available? No. Once okay. a month, the uh, same woman who does shots and things at the uh, senior center comes to Long Meadow and does blood pressure, has a blood pressure clinic. Oh, and was that Denise? Uh, yeah. Denise. Right. 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 She comes once a month. No, we don't have a nurse. We have a uh, health kiosk, which is connected to um, the... Um, uh, I can't think of the name of it, but it's part of the Jewish nursing home medical facilities. 
The can people can go in and um, take their blood pressure and uh, get weighed, and that information can go to a nurse at, at the services at the um, spectrum, it's called. Um, if you want them to notify your doctor, say your blood pressure jumps one, one day when you're in there and the, the nurse knows that she should call your doctor, that facility is available okay. through this kiosk. Um, so that's uh, OK. <coughs> uh, the other one I, I want to ask you about is uh, this lady, Stephanie. That Stephanie wh Harris. What, what exactly is her function there? I mean, is she, she? Well, she um, ba basically is the manager, manager. Of, of the property, representing car okay. property, and she's there approximately nine to five, five days a week. Oh, okay. She, but she has meetings she goes to, right. and she also is the one that would show an apartment to someone who's actually gotten to the top right. of the list. Right. She would make arrangements with the maintenance people to clean an apartment if, if someone has passed away or gone to a nursing home, and the apartment has to be repainted, the rugs have to be cleaned, any, any of those things. She, she basically runs the property on a daily basis. And you have a, a, a there's, there is a maintenance staff also. Oh, yes. And yes. they're there, uh, somebody's day, there all the time. Every day there's someone. Okay, yeah. And so. then snowstorms, they come on the weekends. Right. Because that would add to the, just the security and the, you know. Right. How often does the, uh, the board meet? We meet four times a year. Okay. Yeah, and um, we had a meeting yesterday, as a matter of fact. <laughs> How large is your board? I mean, do you, are, um, are they they're, mostly local? They're all people. Um, in, in Longmeadow? Well, there's one who's moved to East Longmeadow, but basically used to be in Longmeadow. Um, there are nine now uh, active members. Is there a board also made up of residents? Because I have friends who live there. Oh, they have an association. That, yes, that's the, the residents is. have yes. an association. They elect their officers. They have a treasury, okay. and they plan activities. I see. I see. The the Rosenthal's. Ben, yes. Ben and ben, Freddie. Yeah. Right. Do you? Is there enough land? I, you said they. The people donated three acres. Right. Is, is there more land up there for you to expand? No. There this isn't is, any. This 10 acres is it. That's it? Yes. Okay. Because yes. we're surrounded now. The, there were houses that were there before we started, and then there's a new street actually called Essex right. Court that has been built. Five houses have been built since wow. 1980, okay. 81. And we had looked at that land. It was too expensive for us to buy. So we, we didn't buy it. Um, so now we're landlocked. Would basically. the board um, entertain building a, another facility in Longmeadow at another place? Is there? I don't think there's any land. There's no land. I don't think so. <laughs> would you um, go outside of Longmeadow then if there I was land available? Our board would. No. 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 You know, uh, Mr. Carr, as a property manager, certainly might be involved in other properties and other possibilities in other cities or towns, because I said he has properties that he manages in Connecticut and New York and in Springfield. Mm -hmm. But our board, I don't believe, would go out of town. Okay. Uh, Genesis House uh, kind of hugs the line, the city line, and mm -hmm. is Genesis House all in Longmeadow yes. or in Spring? Yeah, no, it's, it's all in, in fact Long in Longmeadow. Yeah, mm. the Jewish nursing home is in, Long Meadow, is in Longmeadow and um, Glen Meadow Glen is Meadow. all okay. in Longmeadow, but that was okay. once one parcel of land. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not familiar with a lot of the housing developments in the area. Is th There's one called Georgetown? That's in Springfield. That's in Springfield. Okay. Right. Now, is yeah. that... Now, those are just apartments. Just apartments, no right. age... No, I, well, I don't know about, I don't know the, li yeah, you know, okay. if there's an age limit. I don't think so. I, it's not that we're trying to sell Georgetown today. But no, no, I was just but curious. They're, they're now condos. And, and they, oh, are they? Yeah. Oh. So I think. Originally built as apartments. They were apartments and originally. And condoized. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just thinking another little perk of, of uh, Emerson. Uh, I happened to be by there a couple of years ago uh, delivering meals when they, we're doing it. They have a clinic, a flu clinic that they oh, uh, sure. set yes. up there rather than having people have to go into uh, 
Glenn Brook probably would, Glenn would. Denise too. She yeah. Probably. Yeah, she yeah. does yeah. the flu oh, yeah, clinic. They, yeah. It's like yeah. once a year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and as far as you were mentioning about rides there earlier, the the senior center itself uh, provides rides. A van. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, actually, no. Well, I guess they do have a van, but I was thinking more that if people need a oh, a ride, they can call over there and right. you know get a set up on a trip to the doctor and so on. Do a lot of the residents? I'll ask you the question. Do a lot of residents from Emersonic use the Emerson adult Manor's center? Are, yeah, the, the, there's uh, quite a few. I mean, they're not uh, exclusively uh, from there, but uh, a lot of people from there do take advantage of it. And it's a you know, it's a more personalized, and you, you yes. know, it's just you taking somebody somewhere and back and so on. So and that we're trying to call a taxi. Oh yeah, well, in town. sure. Yeah. Well, there's no expense to this either, so no. that, that makes it nice too and handy. So, um, okay, um, let's see. There was one one other question. I can't remember what it is now. <laughs> That's the we're danger of this. <laughs> Sign us up. Uh, <laughs> The resident service coordinator is the other person that's there half, half oh, okay. time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, she and Stephanie both, uh, you know, overlap in terms of their keeping an eye on tenants, particularly the ones who might be frail or fading. And <laughs> um, but she um, she divides her time presently between two properties. But starting January, she'll be uh, just at uh, Emerson in the afternoons. And she helps plan the uh, social activities. If I were a, a resident of Emerson, uh, and I'm all alone, but I, uh, all of a sudden I have this yen uh, to get into a different apartment for some reason. You know, maybe I don't like the neighbors, or maybe I like a neighbor that I'd rather be near. Uh, and something opens up in that other place. Can I? If, have first dibs on that? Or well, I, I wouldn't say first dibs, but I think uh, let it be known. Perhaps? The office manager keeps uh, track of any situations okay. where uh, and wherever we can accommodate yeah. a transfer yeah. of an apartment, okay. and we have done that. Yeah, and and maybe somebody that's uh, up on the what is this two floors? Yeah, uh, up on the second floor, but due to health problems or so on, they really would be better off on the first floor. The same thing would happen if, if right, you're aware of Right, except that now we have the elevators. That's true. So people can stay on the second floor even though they may have a walker or a hip yeah, or a knee true. problem. Yeah. And in that's the, why the, we built the elevators. In the one bedroom, what what are the rooms? Is there a living There's room? There's a living room, How many square foot feet? an open kitchen, and a separate bedroom, bath, with a tub and a shower. OK. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure of the square feet. No, oh, okay. I think it might be 850 square feet, but I. Do they have the shower facilities because of the elderly? Um, did they do away with the tub and just have? I think the new apartments, the new market rate, has one bathroom with a full tub and the second bathroom with a shower. Okay. Mm. I was in one the other day. One of the clients that I go for Meals on Wheels, uh, and she has a. One of the new ones, new oh, apartments. Okay. Very nice. I mean, they're and they're very, very and, and nice. And a lot of space. I was surprised how much yeah. space there is, because mm -hmm. seeing them build these things, it, uh, I said, whoa, they'll never get them. Uh, now, uh, the, the new the new that. place that you have the money for, if you get the state money, how long yeah. would it take you from putting the spade in the ground to people moving in? Well, the um, part one edition that we just finished took us twelve months. We get either. We get from 12 to 15 months to to use the money and build, mm -hmm. and I think this one building would probably take a year. That's not bad. Yeah, no. a lot depends on the weather. If sure. you start in the spring and you get you know good weather conditions, yeah. a year is usually. You can do the inside work in the right. cold months. Right. Yeah. Right. Very good. Now, and the, excuse me. It, I was sorry. just going to say, how about mail and things like that? Well, do, do people deliver to the apartments? No. There's a, a central mail facility boxes in the community building. And that was another uh, part of our original planning, that we would have the mail in the community building to get people to come to the out of their apartments every day, interact, even with the um, office manager. So we know. Somebody doesn't show up for three days for their mail. Something's, Something's wrong. wrong. Well, that's yeah. 
That's a good yeah. idea. Now the residents, can they uh, rent out the main facility for an anniversary party, party oh, or sure. family yes. gathering of some yes, sort? Yes, they do. They do that. Uh -huh. There are many, uh, you know, parties that people plan. Have you ever thought of putting like an indoor pool? No, that, uh, <laughs> federal government wouldn't allow a pool. No, really. Well, the therapeutic uh, purposes for um, the elderly is well, very therapeutic. Maybe in the future, but right now <laughs> we don't have the funds for a okay. pool. I, I told you they give HUD allows us to have the money for a commercial kitchen, but they won't give us any subsidy for a meal. For the meals. So we have yeah. to figure out how to do that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the cheapest meal is the breakfast. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A lot of older folks don't want a big breakfast. No. So. Well, that's the cheapest one you can do then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is true, though. They yeah. just don't eat as much now right. at breakfast. Right. And their main meal is usually at lunch. At yes, when, when often. We, often at yeah. lunch. And then their dinner is very light. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah. was thinking uh, nothing related to that, but... Um, we were talking earlier about parking spaces, and uh, quite a few years ago now, I, I, uh, my wife and I put our name on the list, at least to be on the list, and uh, the question came up about parking, and I said, well, the only thing is we've got two cars, and we, for the immediate future, we really don't want to uh, get rid of one of them, and also we go to Florida for a while, so we're wondering about where we could leave a second car if we're allowed to have a second car and uh, Chris I believe was the one that told me that well there is space there is space there uh, and uh, I guess there's even an area where that those people that are leaving their cars for the winter they encourage them to park there. Yes, that that's, was that's true. Because we've, when it we've snows. expanded the parking yeah. with the ten new apartments yeah and the place where we have the winter storage, so right, to speak, right. for cars is a larger space now. So we are able to accommodate right. people I, who want to leave a car and go to Florida in the winter. Are you allowed to say how many people are on the waiting list? Do you have any idea? Um, I used to know. It, when we went to the planning board to get the zoning for this new um, development, we had about 150 people then on the waiting list. I don't know if that's Ooh. gone up anymore. Really? Yeah, there's a need for <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> subsidized senior housing. Mm -hmm. There's no question, and we're in a recession period where there are going to be more people mm -hmm. who need mm -hmm. subsidized mm -hmm. housing. And the new, the new facility, again, <laughs> thinking in the future, hopefully, uh, That'll be uh, all subsidized housing? All low income. All low income. Yeah, subsidized. Okay. And those are pretty much the same size apartments? Yes, as they'll uh, be uh, close in size and close in, mm. uh, you know, the amenities inside patios okay. and balconies. And, and they'll start with an elevator and they'll start with a much bigger um, meeting room. In fact, we'll be able to hold all our meetings in, in that building so that um, it'll accommodate more people. You had mentioned um, when you uh, apply, 2% uh, of your investments are included in your income. Um, when you go into a nursing home, they have like a three or five year rule that money has to be out of your name for a certain period mm -hmm. of time. I think it's five Five now. years yeah. now. Uh, is, does that still hold true? I mean, can you get rid of your investments and sign it over to a trust of some sort? Does that I, affect? I'm not sure. No? I think you'd have to talk to um, Stephanie Harris in the office. And when you make your application, indicate, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I don't want to have to answer that. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, we've pretty much covered the program here for today. Um, some really interesting stuff. I, uh, I'm amazed. Uh, every time I go down there, it's it very, very, if you have not been down there, just drive by it. Uh, as I said before, a lot of people never heard of it, apparently. And uh, if they drive by it, it's not one of these that kind of hits you in the eye, but it's very, very attractive, uh, the yards and everything. Which is another thing, by the way, there's no yard care. It's snow removal, that's mm -hmm. all taken care of. And right. I know that's a big concern for people that get up to our ages. Uh, and no raking leaves. No raking right. leaves. I'll tell you, it's a blessing <laughs> it's a in disguise. It's <laughs> a bonus for sure. <laughs> so, uh, 
Again, Eleanor, is where I really want to uh, let you know we, we do appreciate your time, and I, I'm hoping uh, there will be a lot of people that might want to call in and uh, not call in, but uh, let the senior center know uh, what their thoughts are about this or any other kind of, kind of program that we have. But for now, we have to say goodbye. Uh, audience, I hope you'll enjoy this part of the show, and uh, uh, I guess that's all I have to say. Uh, have a good day.